Okay. Uh, so good evening, Delta Platoon. Welcome to week week two, day one uh, of your coding journey. This week, we're going to be looking at object-oriented programming. And today, we're going to be building towards that by looking at uh, for loops and dictionaries. So can someone give me some example of things we use for loops for in programming? Iterating through arrays. Yep, iterating through arrays. That's a good more one. More objects iterating through pretty much anything. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's a good segue to later on, which we'll get to that. But basically, you know, to expound on that more general, if we if we want to perform a bunch of operations, the same operations over and over again without repeating code, then that's where the power of for loops come in and that feeds into a programming principle called dry like your closer dry which stands for don't repeat yourself so basically if you're copying and pasting code and using it over and over again there's probably some way uh, to make that more succinct and reusable so you're not repeating yourself and that helps with troubleshooting, testing, avoiding bugs. Because if you made one bug or introduced one bug in the in the piece that you're copying and pasting, it's going to pop up all over the place as opposed to just, you know, popping up in one defined location where it's easier to troubleshoot. Uh, so like we were talking about earlier, for loops. So for loops can work on. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at Python. So Python has lists, not arrays. They're very similar. You can think of them almost identically for the purposes of Python, but they're called uh, lists. So they can work on any iterable type. So what, is, what does it mean for a type to be iterable? That means, let's say I have an array and I start at zero. And the next element of the array is one and two, and the computer can step through the type. So that works for lists, arrays. It works for dictionaries, which we'll be taking a look at later. It works for tuples, which are you know, pairs or more of objects. It works for strings, because those are typically stored in an array-like structure. Those are all iterable types. So for loops will work on any of those in Python. Uh, so, looking at the documentation for for loops, so I'm in uh, docs.python.org, and this is the control flow tutorial. So four statements. Um, so it goes into if you're more if you're familiar with other programming languages, they work. For loops work a little differently in Python. Uh, they iterate over the item of uh, a sequence, not uh, by defining an iteration step and a halting condition like you might be used to in JavaScript. Um, so this, uh, a little advanced, have you all seen uh, W3Schools? Have you been to this website? Yes, sir. So uh, this is an excellent resource uh, for, learning new features and programming, but they have a really good section here on for loops that talks a lot about uh, some of the functionality. Um, so either of these uh, good references, if you if you can't remember the syntax or can't remember how for loops work or have any questions. Uh, I found that a lot of times now if you Google uh, kind of learning programming things. You'll get a lot of uh, spammy sites that are really just aggregating links from other sites. So sometimes it's good to go straight to a known good source of, of documentation. Okay, so let's take a look at iterating over lists in Python. So I'm gonna change into my documents and then change into my code platoon directory and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a new directory 
called Python for loops. And I'm going to change into that directory. And then who remembers how I would create a, a, a Python file from the command line? Is it touch? touch? Yep. So touch and the name of the file. So I'll call it for loops.py. And then I'm going to open VS Code with that file. Okay, so now I have my, I'm in, okay, so I'm in my for loops. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list in Python. So I don't know about you, but I love coffee. I love uh, good coffee, bad coffee, fancy coffee. Uh, non fancy coffee. I guess that's uh, one of the benefits of being a submariner on a six on 12 off watch rotation is that number one, it destroys your sleep schedule, and number two, it requires a constant caffeine intake to stay alert. So we'll just say, uh, you know, what are some origins for coffee? So Peruvian. Ethiopian, Colombian, we'll say Mexican. Those are some good ones. Now let's say I want to print uh, each element of my of my list. Uh, what's one way to do that? I can just put in a bunch of print statements and. and print each element one by one. But this rapidly gets unwieldy, right? If this rapidly gets unwieldy, the more elements that are in the list. But this will do the job, right? So how do I run this from the command line? So Python 3. Python 3. Python 3. Python 3 file name, yep, exactly. So this should print out what? It should print out Peruvian, Ethiopian, Colombian, Mexican, each on their own line, which it does. Can you all read that or is that too small? Make it a little bigger. Hopefully that's a little better. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is, so if I want to print, print with a for loop in Python, it's very easy. So I say for coffee, coffee is just a placeholder for, for coffee, sorry, in my coffee, which is the name of my array, colon, and then I just want to print coffee, right? And this does the exact same thing as this. So basically, this is going to say for each element in the list, my coffee, which is what coffee is, print the coffee, and then move on to the next element. Um, print that, print that until you reach the end of the list, and then continue on with any code that is outside of the list. So this should be function, this should print out identically to this, except for this extra print statement here. Oh yeah, uh, so commenting out lines or multiple lines in VS Code quickly, if you hit shift backslash, oops, with the lines that you want, it'll comment them, or if they're commented out, uncomment them. It's super handy for debugging. So this should print out the same thing, right? Peruvian, Ethiopian, Colombian, Mexican, and then when it gets done, it continues on with the rest of the code. Okay, so that's a really simple example. Let's say we wanna do something more complicated. Um, 
let's say we want to sum all of the numbers from one to a hundred. So all of the numbers from one to one hundred. Or sorry, sum all of the numbers. I said sum, didn't I? So first, first thing we're going to need is some sort of variable to hold our sum, which we'll set to zero to start. And then we're going to say, uh, we're going to look at a new function here, which is called uh, range. So for i in range, um, and we want to start at zero, and the last element is not included. So if we want to sum to 100, we have to go to 101 because it uh, it will not include the last number in whatever your calculations are. And then I want to say sum plus equals one. So this will sum all the numbers from one to 100 using this range function here. So the way range works, um, is you have a range, you have the starting number, the ending number, and the, uh, I guess, the step. So how much it's going to add each time it goes from number to number. So the starting number is optional. So we could actually, and we'll, I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and run this once. So this should come out to like, Oh, I forgot to print it. Very important to print. So, what did I do? I in range. Oh, you have to use I, not one. In my defense, that I look a lot like a one. So now we get 5,050, right? And that should be the same as if we were to do it with zero as our starting point. So if you don't enter a starting number, uh, the default is zero. Um, and if you don't enter a step, the default is one. Does that make sense how the range function works? Uh, so you can start with a non-zero value. So say I want to sum all of the numbers, the numbers from 50 to 100. I would say, comment you out. We still have our sum is zero up here. So I'll say 4i in range 50 to 101. I'll say sum of equals i, not one this time. And then print sum. So this should be uh, just a sanity check, some number that's smaller than the previous number we got, which is 5,050. Let's go ahead and run that. Yep, so we got 3,825. Um, but what if we just want all the even numbers? So if I want to sum all of the even numbers from uh, 50 to 100. And that's when we're going to use the step function. So for i in range 50 to 101 by 2. Some. And this should be, since we're only taking the even numbers, this should be some number just as a sanity check smaller than 3,825, okay? which we get 1,950, which makes sense. It's about roughly the same, uh -huh. excuse me, roughly about half of that value. Um, but now let's say we want to work with our list of coffee again. And we want to assign a new value uh, to a couple of the elements in our array. 
or we want to print, sorry, we want to print them based on the index of, of the, the index of the uh, list. So for that, how do I get the length of a list in Python? Who can help me out? Is it just len, len, right? Yep, len, and then the list that you want the length of. So in this case, I want to print um, using an f string. Um, is anyone not familiar with f strings in Python? Um, I am not. Could you explain so, that? Yes. So basically, um, what it is, is if you put an F before the string, then and you use curly braces, you can have a variable and expression. Or so I could say my coffee, uh, my coffee sabai, which is a reference to my list. It'll be the ith, the ith. I've member of the list, so it'll start with zero. So it'll print zero, it'll print Peruvian, one, it'll print Ethiopian, two, it'll print Colombian, three, it'll print uh, Mexican. Or you can do something like you can also make them uh, an expression. So an ir uh, you can call a function, you can say two plus two. Um, I could say, you know, three times six, you can, and it'll evaluate that and it'll replace whatever that variable is. So it'll replace this my coffee I with whatever that corresponds to at runtime. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so when I print this, it should say, I love Peruvian coffee, I love Ethiopian coffee, I love uh, Colombian coffee, and I love Mexican coffee. So, so this is uh, for I in range length of my coffee. So that's kind of a way of doing what we did here in a less succinct manner. Uh, but where this comes in handy is if we want to reassign values in my coffee, in my coffee list. So if we wanted to say, uh, I no longer love Ethiopian coffee, now I love Brazilian coffee. So I'll say, if I equals equals, that was the first, yeah, Ethiopian. So what's going to happen here is that when it gets to i equals one, it's going to reassign the list uh, the the list value at that point to Brazilian. So now it should print Peruvian, Brazilian, Colombian, uh, Mexican. Yep. So you can see it reassigned this value. So now if we were to just go through and Prints all the coffees, we should see that that new value is no longer has Ethiopian in the array, it has Brazilian because that, that value was reassigned. Oh, I left that in, sorry. except I commented out the code, so it's no, no longer reassigned. Doing well this evening, folks, doing well. I clearly need more coffee. So you can see it reassigned it, and then it stays reassigned on the next element of the list. Whilst if we did it in here, so if we said, if coffee equals equals, Brazilian coffee equals.
So what's going to happen here? Whenever it's iterating, when when the I or the iterator, the coffee is, it hits the one index and it sees that it's Brazilian, then it's going to replace that iterator, that coffee with Ethiopian. So it's just going to put it back to the way it was at the beginning. So what is what is what would happen if I print? The list again. It'll replace Brazilian with Ethiopian. Okay, let's run it and see what we got. Yep, so we see it's reassigned back. It's still Brazilian. So why is it you change you change the iterator instead of the array, the yeah, object so this, of the list? Yeah, so this uh, right here, this is a temporary value that so the value of this equals the value in my copy. Um, so when we change this value, we are not changing the my coffee list itself. Does that make sense? So here we're changing the my copy list. So we're updating this list. Here we're changing the value in this variable coffee, uh, which is independent of my coffee. So when we reassign coffee here, if it's Brazilian to Ethiopian, and it prints Ethiopian the second time through, the value in my coffee is still Brazilian. What questions do you have about that? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, because we can call coffee in the for in loop, we can call it anything, right? It's just whatever we want. Yeah, yeah, I could call this um, something and it do the same thing. And I could call this uh, something else. Just need to change something. Yeah, it's really um, and this should be the same. This should yield the same results. Yeah, so my philosophy kind of here is like programs are made are written to be read by humans, like the the for the most part, the computer doesn't care what you call your variables, but someone else who's reading your code, um, the more, the easier it is to read and understand, uh, the easier it is to debug and add features to. So just like code is meant to be written or read by humans. So it shouldn't I mean, I could do stuff like you know, J, K, which makes sense for like temporary things like the convention is to use I and J and K for array indexes, but not for uh, variables. So that, I mean, it makes it a little less clear, um, you know, what K is. I kind of have to look and see, oh, look, K is an element of my coffee instead of it being just a coffee. Or if I read that line, it's kind of self-evident what's going on. Okay, but let's say um, we wanted to access the we wanted to access the elements of the array, and we wanted to um, to update them while iterating through the array. So for that, we can use the enumerate function. So Enumerate uh, will basically, if we say length of list, so, or we'll just say length of my copy in that case, since that's what we'll be able to look at. So if we do this, what the, so the range function up here returns numbers, right? So it's gonna return zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, until it gets to a hundred, and then it gets to 101 and stops. 
this enumerate function is going to return pairs, uh, what's called in programming tuples. So it's going to return the index of wherever it's at in my coffee and the value at my coffee. So what does that look like practically? So we can say four i comma value. So this is, we'll say coffee, sorry. Just in enumerates like coffee. And then I can do something like print. And then I can say, if I want to print what number they are in the array, uh, and then print the copy. So this is going to go through the same way as, um, you know, it's kind of a combination of this method and this method, in that you're going to get the index of wherever you're at and you're going to get a copy of the value, right? So if I execute this, I should get basically a list one, or sorry, zero, one, two, three, and the coffee name. So let's get rid of some of this. What did I do? I have done something wrong. Oh, is it having that len in your enumerate? Probably is, but um, I'm going to figure out what I did wrong by going to the docs. And let's look up enumerate and see what the right syntax is. Okay, so you, you were right, but looking at this, so what it does is converts a tuple into an enumerate object. So we need the iterable, which is in our case, the list, like we talked about lists, sets, dictionaries, um, those are all iterable objects in Python. So we need to get rid of the length. Alistair. Yep, so we get zero, Peruvian one, Ethiopian two, Colombian three, Mexican. Excuse me. Um, and let's just say, you know, I want to reassign something to every value in my coffee. So I can do that. And this is just going to print a list of all because now I've reassigned. Oh, once I change this. So that reiterates the point that I made earlier, is that this coffee is not the same as my coffee sub i. So we could see that I made a mistake and I reassigned the, the list variable, but I didn't reassign coffee when what I actually wanted to do was reassign coffee. So these all say all. Yep, so they all. Um, So enumerate, and then your iterable. In this case, it's our list. Um, so let's talk about some other functionality of lists. So you have the break statement. So what does that do? It don't do anything else in the current uh, execution of the list. To, uh, so where does that do? So if we say four, uh, 
So let's say if coffee equals equals Ethiopian, and I want to break. Else I want to print coffee. So what's going to happen here? So it's going to the first iteration, it's going to be Peruvian. So it's going to say, is this coffee equal Ethiopian? No. So print Peruvian. And then it's going to go to Ethiopian. So coffee equals Ethiopian. So it's going to break out of the list. And then it prints outside the list. So this should just print how many elements of the list? One. Yeah, it should just print the first element. Yep, so we can see Prince prints Peruvian, it gets here, gets to the break statement, and then breaks out of the list. So you can think of the break as basically escaping from the list and moving on to the next, um, the next line of code outside of whatever the list is. Um, you can also have a continue statement, which is similar to a break statement except it will so what do we think is going to happen here Probably going to skip over uh, Colombian. Yep. So it's going to see Peruvian. Peruvian doesn't equal Colombian. It's going to print Peruvian. It's going to see Ethiopian. Ethiopian doesn't equal Colombian. And then it's going to get to Colombian. Yep. See Colombian. It's not going to do anything else in the list. It's just going to go back up to this condition here. And it's going to go to Mexican and print Mexican. So it'll print every element except Colombian. Yep, and you can see Peruvian, Ethiopian, Mexican, and then outside of the list. Okay, so that's, uh, so break, breaks out of the list, continue, ends the current iteration of the list. So basically, wherever you're at in the list, it goes back up to the list and starts the next cycle, is what continue does. And break takes you out of the list completely. Okay, um, so nested for loops. Who's familiar with that term? Yeah, so basically it's a for loop inside of a for loop. So if I want to do something like this, if I wanna print something like this using a, a for loop, who has an idea about how I can do that? You could use a, a 4J nested into a 4I and okay. on each each J iteration, print your I term. Exactly, yep. So I'll say 4I in what range do I need here to get this this kind of pyramid that I just did? What number do zero I want? Five. So, yeah, the, the zero is the same, oh, so yeah, you can just five. put five. And then... What range do I need for J? So I want to print I one time, two, two times, three, three times, four, four times. What am I going to use for my range for J? I? Exactly. It's I, because I because I in the first loop through uh It'll be one, two, three, four, or so. So it'll be, it'll start with zero, but it's not going to print anything because uh, the range is zero, zero, and it's not going to execute. And then it'll go to one, two, three, four, and then get the five and be done. So I want to print I. So normally a print ends with a, a print statement in Python ends with a what? Well, 
Like if I were to just leave this like this, what would happen? A new line. It's going to give you a new line. Yeah. yeah, so it's going to print one on one line, two on a line, two on the next line, three on the next line. So I can change that uh, by changing the end of the print statement. So I just want a space, so I'm just going to make it a space. And then I'm going to need to print a new line after each execution. So after each row, I need to print a new line to get to the next line. Uh, so how does this look? Do we think that's going to print this? Let's find out. Yep, so we get one, uh, two, two, three, 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 four, 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 similar to similar to that. So basically what's happening here is we have this for loop. So it's going to say for I in range five. So range five is going to have, you're going to have iterations zero, one, two, three, four. So the first time through, I will be zero. So for J in range zero, so nothing's gonna happen. The next time two, it's one. So it's gonna be for J in range one. So the first time J will be one. So it'll print a one with a space. It'll come back up here. Uh, we're now on two. So that's no longer in the range of I. So it's going to go down here to print the new line, go back up to 4i in range 5. Uh, i is now going to be 2 because it's going to get uh, plus 1 on this iteration. So it's going to be 4j in range 2. Uh, so it's going to start with a, uh, a 1, or sorry, 2, and then print nothing, and then another 2 and print a space, and then it's going to get to 3 and go back uh, to, the, to the new line. Does that make sense? Or would someone like me to try and explain it uh, in a different way? Yes, please. Okay, actually, let's take a look at what happens in the debugger. So if I want to, let's put a debug point here. And let's say I want to, where's my debugger? Maybe not, I can't, there we go. Okay, so who's taking a look at the debugger before? So basically what this is, um, and what you really need to pay attention to is it's this, this button here, run and debug. And then what I've done is I've set a breakpoint. Uh, and then what we need to be concerned with here are the values of our variables. So you can see I is zero right now. And then I can step through this and see what's gonna happen. So if I step to the next step to be executed, it's gonna print a new line because there's nothing in the range of zero. And we're gonna go back up to I in range five. And now, so now we're back in the next iteration. I is now one and J is now zero. So nothing's gonna happen. I'm sorry, J is, well, I is one, sorry, because it's range of one. So it's gonna print one, one time. And then we're in the next iteration, so I is two. And now we should get a, uh, a two, and then it should go through the iteration again and print a two. Okay, now we get to the two and break out and print a new line. And then we should go back up here. I should now be three. So it's now gonna be a range of three. So J is zero, J is one, J is two. I think, where's my, uh, and then I'll print a new line. I is now gonna be incremented after this step to four. So it's now the range of four, starting with zero, print four, print four again, print four the third time, print four the fourth time. We're on the fifth time, so now it should print a new line. And you can see the yellow highlighted line is the line that it's on. And now we should come up back up to I. 
and it should exit out of the loop because now I is going to be five, which is uh, signals the termination. Sorry, we're, oh, we're, I restarted somehow. So run and debug. Uh, we're going to go over this in a lot more detail later on. So if this uh, if uh, this didn't make sense. Don't worry about it at this point. But it's just another way to look at what's happening in your programs. That's uh, super useful. So the breakpoint is where it starts, right? That's the breakpoint is where it's going to stop the first time. So you can set your breakpoint wherever you want, and then, um, then you have a couple options. So you can execute to the next breakpoint, which is what continue will do or you can step over, which will step to the next line to be executed. Or if there's a function call or something, you can uh, step into or restart or stop. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so so when you say where it stops the first time, that's the breakpoint. What do you mean by that? That's where- Yeah, so if I take away this breakpoint and I debug it, my program's just gonna run. So if I run it now, it's just going to spit everything out. See, it doesn't. In order to, I, I get what you're saying. Now. I get what you're saying. Yeah, if yeah. you want to yeah. interact with the debugger, you have to tell it, "Hey, stop at this point, at least one point." Because it's top down. Because it's just one big file, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so, any questions about for loops? and ranges before we move on to uh, dictionaries. So my question is about the two different print statements. The first one, I'm assuming prints for the 4J loop. Yep. So then the second one is for I. Yeah, so this, so yeah. Okay. Um, I, th I think you got it. Yeah. What happened here? So what's gonna happen here Oh, I forgot to comment on line. So yeah, so because this print statement is nested, so indented in this for loop, this is what's going to happen for each iteration of the J loop. Mm -hmm. And you can see this print statement is at the same level as um, is it is nested in the I loop. So it's going to happen when this code is done and only when this code is done. Okay. Does that answer yeah. your question? Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Great, thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at dictionaries. So we have this fantastic list of nationalities of coffees, but let's say that I want to store uh, some more information about the coffee. So that's when we use a dictionary. So a dictionary is a it's basically a collection of key value pairs. And you can kind of think of a list as a simple dictionary except in this case the keys are numbers so the key for proving because it's the zero the first element of the list is zero um ethiopian the key is one or sorry the key is zero the value is proving the key is one the value is ethiopian the key is two the value is colombian but we can also name those keys so let's say i want more information about the coffee. So let's say the coffee has a name. So my key is name. So this is the key, colon, and then whatever the value is. So we'll call it, uh, uh, and then a, and then a uh, comma, if we want to add another uh, key value pair. So what region is this from? Um, And then what are what are the flavor notes? And for this, I want a list. So we'll say it has notes of 
almonds and cherry and chocolate. So I don't know if y'all are anything like me, but when my brother brings me the fancy coffee because he bought too much and it says it has notes of whatever, uh, the only reason I know that it has those is because it says them on the bag. Um, it all tastes like delicious coffee to me. So why is why would you prefer this over a list? Um, because you can tag your information. Um, so you can name your keys and associate them with values. Uh, so what's gonna happen if I print, sorry, prints my cut and then prints Peruvian. Let's see what spits out. So you can see this is what our list looks like and this is what our dictionary looks like. But let's just say I want just the name from the Peruvian. In that case, I'm gonna put in the key. So it's just like accessing a list. Instead of using the index, you're gonna use the key for whatever element that you want. So this should just print out uh, la llama. Yep. So that's how you access the elements of a dictionary. You can do reassignment in the same way. So let's say Peruvian name equals, I don't know. And then one of prints Peruvian. So this should reassign the value and print a new value, which it does. So very similar to working with lists. The only difference here is instead of index, you have keys. Um, you can iterate over them just like you would iterate over a list. So if I want to So what do we think this is going to print out? If I go through Peruvian. Does it print the whole key uh, value keys. pair? Yep, it's going to print the key value pair. So it's going to be name, uh, la llama, region, delicacion, it's going to be flavor, and then this list here. What did I do? Oh, got some extra stuff on there. Sorry, it's going to print the keys here. If I want the value, sorry, if I want the key value pair, I have to say in Peruvian dot items. And that'll unpack it so I just get and that'll unpack it so I get the, the key value pairs. Um, I can also access the keys by doing Peruvian.keys. It should be, it should print out the same thing again, name regions flavors, which it does, even though we changed it to keys. And then if I want just the values, I say four values in Peruvian dot values. And that should just print la llama Billy Asuncion and then the list of the flavor notes, which we can see here that it does. So, I mean, and so that's a, a quick introduction to dictionaries and how to access their items. Um, just remember, similar to lists, except that instead of having a numerical index, you have a key. What questions do you have on dictionaries?